Hey, Tyson here from Refuge Church in Lenore City, Tennessee. Thank you for listening to our message today. Refuge Church is a family of faith sent to proclaim hope in Jesus Christ through relationships. For more resources and information about Refuge, please visit us on the web at refugeph.com. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Refuge Podcast. This week, we are jumping back into our Walk Like Jesus series with an episode titled, Jesus, the Second Adam. So to kick things off, I want to remind you quickly of why Refuge Church exists. What is our ultimate goal here as a body of believers here in our community and across the entire world? And that is to carry out our mission statement. The mission statement of Refuge Church is a family of faith sent to proclaim hope in Jesus through relationships. Yes, we are a family of faith. Yes, we operate on a relationship model, but most importantly, we are here to share the good news, the hope that is found in Jesus Christ. That's why we do these podcasts. That's why we do all of these different, um, we create all of these different resources for the church so that we can grow together, that we remain a family of faith, that we build relationships constantly, not just with each other, but out into the community. And in doing so, we can share the good news of Jesus Christ. So why is that so important? Why is Jesus so important this week? We're going to talk about that in a moment, and we're going to relate between Adam and Jesus and how Jesus is the second Adam. So to start things off, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 27. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. They will rule the fish of the sea, the birds of the sky, the livestock, the whole earth, and the creatures that crawl on the earth. So God created man in his own image. He created him in the image of God. He created them male and female. So in the broad summary of creation that we see in Genesis chapter 1, we can establish a few important things. Number one that I always like to hammer on, it says, let us make man in our image image, indicating that the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Spirit were together there in the beginning at the time of creation. But regarding man here, we see two important things. Number one, man was created in the image of God, meaning that man is a reflection of the Creator. The creation was made to be his reflection, to point to him, right? Number two is that man was created with a purpose, created not just out of thin air for no reason, but created to tend to all of God's creation here on earth. And in doing so, we're bringing glory to the Creator. The same way that God looks after us, we are called to look after God's creation. If we skip down a little bit to Genesis chapter 2, we can see a little bit more detailed explanation about the creation of man in chapter 2, verse 7. That says, Then the Lord formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. So here we have God, the all-powerful creator of all things, forming man, the first man, Adam, from the dust of the earth, literally breathing into his nostrils the breath of life. Life. This is such a beautiful picture of God's power and His glory and how He chose out of His free will to create man for a purpose, to glorify Him. But there is a problem with man. If we read on in chapter 2, verse 18, it says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. So I will make a helper corresponding to him. As God was creating all of creation, he was creating male and female counterparts of all the different animals, and then he saw that man had no corresponding partner. See, there's a problem here. God sees that every creature has a helper, but for Adam there is none. Man was alone without a suitable partner. So God creates one for him. In verse 21 it says, So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to come over the man, and he slept. God took one of his ribs and closed the flesh at that place. Then the Lord God made the rib he had taken from the man into a woman and brought her to the man. There's an interesting point regarding relationships here. What God saw was not good was that Adam was alone. So he created Eve to be his correspondent, to be his helper. We can see in the beginning of creation that God desires. He wants us to have relationships, not just with him, but with others who are like us. That's why it is so important and core to Refuge Church that we are a relationship model church. 
But for now, understand that man and woman, Adam and Eve, were created in the image of God for the purpose of God. And at the time of creation, the earth is pure. At the beginning of creation, when Adam and Eve walked with God in the Garden of Eden, they had full access, unbroken access to God. And as a result, they were blessed, God telling them, be fruitful and multiply. They had unbroken, unfettered access to God. Life in the garden, as God designed, was beautiful. This is how man was intended to live with God. And Adam and Eve did live this way until sin began to permeate into their minds, ultimately leading to the act of eating from the tree of knowledge. This act of sin was an act of rebellion against the Creator. And in essence, this gave Adam and Eve knowledge of reality apart from God. As in, by turning from God's command not to eat from the tree and following their own desires, they had rejected the holiness of God. They now knew a world outside of God, outside of obedience to God, obedience to themselves, and thus brought sin into the world. And because, as we've talked so many times before in this podcast, because God is holy, that which is unholy cannot remain in his presence. And this led to them, Adam and Eve, being cast from God's presence, being cast out of the Garden of Eden. And the entire world changes at this moment. Sin is brought into the world. The world becomes tainted and broken. And this chasm is created between man and God. So let's put this into perspective for a moment. In the Garden, Adam experienced life as God designed. Unbroken fellowship with God. Fully human in the sense of existing without sin being a reflection of his creator. After sin has entered the world, Adam is almost not fully human anymore, is the way that God designed, but he is a depraved human, a sinful human, and he passes the nature of sin onto all of his descendants. We see this in Romans chapter 12, verse 5. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way death spread to all people because all have sinned. You see, Sin causes us to see life through a clouded lens, being tainted by our own desires, our own self-centeredness. This is ultimately the root of all sin, is our desire for self over our desire for God. And you might ask, why would God allow man the opportunity to sin at all if he really loves his creation as the Bible teaches? But it is because of God's love that we were given free will. God giving us free will created to be in his his reflection. Because God had free will, he gives us free will to choose him so that we would choose holiness and bring glory to him. Furthermore, remember that man was created to have a relationship with God. And while man chose sin, chose his own desires, God was not content with abandoning his creation. He was not content with just allowing man to just be depraved and fall into this pattern of sin and to be eternally separated from him. And that's where Jesus comes into the picture. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 45 through 49 for a moment. So it is written, The first man Adam became a living being, The last Adam became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural, then the spiritual. The first man was from the earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. Like the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. Like the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. And just as we have borne into the image of the man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. Let's break this down for a second and just kind of put all the facts out here. It says the last Adam or the second Adam, this is a reference to Jesus. Adam becoming a living being, but Christ becoming a living spirit. The natural man first, the spiritual second. The first man born of dust, the second man born of spirit. What's interesting here is what we see in verses 48 through 49. It says, like the man of dust, so are those who are of the dust. We can extrapolate this out, that those being born into the world are like the first man, like Adam, pointing us to our nature of sin and our nature of death. Just as Romans said, that through one man sin entered the world and thus death spread to all men because all have sinned. But it also says that like the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Using the same logic, we can see that those who are born of the Spirit are like 
Jesus. Here is our picture of being reborn in the Spirit as a new creation, being reborn in Christ because of God's love for mankind. He was not content with us just continuing to dwell in our sin and thus bringing forth our own punishment of death. His intention was always for man and God to be together in unbroken fellowship in this relationship for this purpose to redeem mankind from sin and to restore this relationship, he sent Christ, his son, to be born of the Spirit, born outside of man and woman with the miraculous virgin birth, so that he would not be innately sinful like the rest of mankind. And because Jesus was not born into sin, he was born sinless, he could live a sinless life and go on to be that perfect sacrifice for all people, for all sin, for all time. Romans teaches us, the wage of sin is death to all who have sinned. But through the sacrifice of this spotless lamb, Jesus, we could be redeemed of that sin and once again have this unbroken relationship with God. Jesus is the lamb. Let me quickly read to you John chapter 5, 24. It says, Truly I tell you, anyone who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not come under judgment, but has passed from death to life. Just like we saw in verse 49, this verse is illustrating that while we bear the image of the man of dust, being our sinful nature, we will, through Christ, bear the image of the man of heaven, being Jesus. Through our faith and redemption in Christ's work on the cross, we are made new. Jesus is the second Adam. Just as Adam brought sin into the world, Jesus brings salvation into the world. Whereas Adam was not born by natural means, he was formed of the dust of the earth. Jesus, too, was not born of natural means, but miraculous conception. We can go back to 1 Corinthians for a second time and see again another passage that illustrates Christ's nature as the second Adam. Going to chapter 15, verse 20 and 22, it says, But as it is, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For just as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all will be made alive. Christ being raised first from the dead, born again, leaves a path for all of us to follow in his footsteps. Just as sin and death were brought to all through one man, life and resurrection will be brought to all through one man. In Adam we die but in Christ we live. As we talk through this concept of Jesus being the second Adam, I almost want to give you a paradox for a second, just to think about, to put into perspective Adam and Jesus. Adam lived in a perfect world, paradise, surrounded by God, in constant blessing of this relationship with God. And yet Adam chose sin over faithfulness to God. Jesus lived in a world full of sin, and yet chose faithfulness and obedience to God over sin, even to the point of death. If anything, this should magnify how beautiful the story of the gospel really is, how beautiful the life of Jesus really is, and and it should pull us more towards God, that that Adam, who had everything, chose self over God, but Jesus, being born into a world with nothing, he chose us over himself choosing to die to set us free of our sins so that we could be again in this unbroken relationship with God. Christ showed us that it is possible to live a life that is glorifying to God. So how do we do that? Well, we again look to the teachings of Jesus for the answer, and we're going to go back to John chapter 5 to do so. In chapter 5 verse 30, Jesus says, I can do nothing on my own. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. Here's kind of our end point here. If you want to live according to God's original design, meditate on this verse from chapter 5, verse 30 of John. I can do nothing of my own. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but I seek the will of him who sent me. I encourage you to meditate on this verse and recognize that you can do nothing on your own apart from God, including to save yourself, to redeem yourself from sin. That only comes through Jesus. And once you have stepped into that relationship, that discipleship relationship with Jesus, seek not your own will, but the will of God. 
I hope this podcast has given you some encouragement and some insight into Jesus and understanding his role as the second Adam. If you're new to this series, if this is the first podcast you've stepped into, we've been doing this long series about walking like Jesus, focusing on improving our discipleship relationship with Jesus. I would encourage you to go back and listen to all the previous episodes and tune in again next week. Thank you for listening to this message today brought to you by Refuge Church. Please visit our website for more resources as well as our YouTube channel. Just search for Refuge Church in Lenore City, Tennessee to find us. We hope that this message has helped you find hope in Jesus Christ.